Good morning everyone and welcome back to another episode of Thoughts on Education by College Dunya. Today I'm glad to host Professor Ramesh Bell, Director of International Management Institute. Sir, I'm welcoming to welcome you to the College Dunya Thoughts on Education program. So 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 kindly please introduce yourself to our viewers sir. I'm uh, Professor Ramesh Bell, uh, I'm the director of uh, International Management Institute for Nature Campus. Sir. Uh, since 2012 uh, prior to that i was uh, with i my daily and uh, actually i started my career with uh, i am lucknow then uh, moved to i ft new daily uh, and then i am i today uh, currently with the uh, i am i bhuvneshwar for for the tenures so uh, i came here to set up this particular campus uh, uh, so from the first batch uh, till the current 13th batch uh, We have uh, seen the institution growing uh, day by day. Okay. okay, sir. So, then, sir, being the director, what is your philosophy of leadership? How would you describe your leadership style, sir? See, uh, it's difficult to uh, describe uh, uh, the leadership as such uh, because uh, the more important point is. Uh, Uh, you alone cannot uh, run an institution or create an institution it is always uh, the people uh, who basically drives this particular institution the leader has to build, uh, give the guidance uh, uh, okay and take the people along and that's what we basically uh, try to uh, following it uh, uh, since beginning uh, um, the two different things which we did uh, one we ran this particular campus as an entrepreneurial venture uh, okay where we gave uh, a free hand uh, to each and every one uh, okay to think uh, out of the box uh, and uh, bring new ideas uh, of uh, managing an institution uh, so with that uh, the empowerment came in uh, to the individuals uh, and obviously uh, when people started thinking about uh, uh, the institution so they are com- connect their involvement uh, goes up uh, uh, to the highest uh, level uh, Okay, and that's that's how we basically ran this particular campus in Spain. Then, our faculty is empowered uh, to take decisions. Uh, uh, staff is empowered to take decisions. Uh, uh, we are a student-run institution, so there are lots of uh, uh, committees and clubs uh, at the students level, uh, and the students basically try to uh, drive those initiatives uh, for uh, their development. Uh, so. when the student join an institution uh, uh, from day 1 uh, they uh, they join one of those uh, clubs and uh, uh, activities uh, uh, okay and uh, they uh, they automatically try to learn uh, while doing certain uh, activities events uh, okay uh, so so we follow a philosophy of learning inside the classroom and out of the classroom so that's it Okay, that's great, sir. So you have held key position at education institutes throughout your professional career. So, what are the key factors that keep you connected with the education sector? It's a passion, uh, passion to uh, uh, disseminate knowledge. Uh, uh, okay, uh, and uh, that's that passion drives uh, everything uh, because. Uh, whatever profession you are in uh, you need to be passionate about it and you need to enjoy that uh, okay uh, so the more you enjoy more you contribute uh, and that's that's a simple philosophy of getting connected uh, and uh, another important aspect uh, uh, of uh, any leadership uh, is uh, that uh, you need to network uh, okay and you need to be connected uh, uh, with uh, people from all spheres of life uh, Uh, and especially when we belong to an education sector uh, okay we need to uh, bring in people from a diverse uh, backgrounds uh, okay and and if you are connected uh, with people across uh, industries across functionalities with uh, diverse uh, portfolios uh, okay that would uh, bring in a, a different kind of a learning experience uh, for our students also and uh, that's that's how we basically try uh, managing this Okay, so so the next question is, uh, how does the IMI curriculum ensures the industry's best practice? Uh, every 
uh, every year uh, during uh, the summer uh, vacations, uh, uh, okay, uh, we we try to revisit uh, our curriculum. So, uh, okay, uh, our uh, cur curriculum revision actually happens at three three stages. Uh, one uh, at the area level, uh, okay, the functional area level, the internal faculty sit together and they try to revisit. Uh, what topics are relevant and what topics needs to be changed. Uh, uh, okay, and uh, this uh, second is uh, the extended area level where we basically try to uh, involve uh, industry experts also. Uh, okay, uh, to give us a feedback on uh, whatever we are trying to teach and whatever is relevant for their industry for their requirements. Uh, the third. Uh, we do it at a faculty council level uh, where all the faculties basically sit together and try to revisit uh, what are we teaching and uh, uh, can we integrate uh, some of the things at the cross functional levels also uh, okay because some of the topics are being taught from a marketing perspective as well as from the finance perspective as well as from the operations perspective uh, so uh, so the cross functional integration actually tries to happen at the faculty council level the third, uh, fourth one, uh, what we have is an academic advisory committee, uh, which is basically a group of uh, senior leaders from uh, the academia as well as from the industry. Uh, okay, so it's not only uh, the faculties of IMI, we basically draw uh, the academia from uh, the leading institutions of the world, uh, okay, and uh, the industry leaders. Uh, uh, so that uh, process also we do it uh, once in two years. Uh, Okay, uh, and uh, based on the feedbacks, we try to uh, update our uh, curriculum and keep it uh, more updated, uh, keep it more contemporary, uh, and that's that's how we drive uh, this curriculum. Okay, so, so, uh, and uh, what do you think your roles and responsibilities to the institution and the students are? To create uh, good human beings, uh, that's that's the foremost uh, responsibility. Uh, okay. Uh, the students who come out of an IMI uh, should be passionate about uh, uh, driving their passion. Uh, okay, uh, must have uh, a respect for every individual, uh, every human being. Uh, okay, and they must contribute uh, uh, to the development of the society and uh, and in turn uh, to the development of the nation. Even uh, okay, and that's that's how we really look at it. Okay, so and so when you first joined IMI, so what was your vision for the institution? Okay, uh, interesting. Uh, uh, when I joined, uh, we we just started this particular campus. Uh, uh, we had uh, only twelve students, four faculty members, and about eight to ten uh, staff members. Uh, uh, such a big campus. Uh, uh, so when you start from zero, uh, okay. Uh, you always think that how can you sustain and how, how are you going to take uh, this institution to the new heights uh, that is what uh, with that particular vision I came in uh, mm -hmm. right and, um, as I said uh, uh, we ran this institution as an entrepreneurial venture uh, so uh, we try doing uh, things very differently uh, okay so that uh, we try to create a mark uh, uh, in, in the industry, uh, in the society, and that's what we are able to achieve with. Uh, okay, so, sir, and uh, what do you see as IMI's greatest strength? My faculty, my people, my uh, my students, my alums. Okay, sir. Okay, and uh, what do you see as the biggest challenges facing higher education today, and how do you think your institution is addressing those challenges? See, a lot of uh, technological integrations are happening uh, worldwide uh, across industries. Uh, okay, uh, so a uh, lot of automations are happening. A lot of uh, uh, artificial intelligence robotics are being uh, getting integrated into uh, into business processes. Uh, okay, uh, so so it's important uh, for uh, a management institution to. Keep track of these kinds of changes, whatever are happening, uh, the new innovations, uh, and try to integrate those into the curriculum. Uh, because uh, uh, what we are, uh, we are trying to create manpower for tomorrow. Uh, okay, and uh, 
as per uh, number of studies, uh, uh, it is being talked about that 80% of the jobs are going to become obsolete uh, and the new new job profiles and new skill sets are required. So, so it's important uh, for an institution and for our students and for the workforce uh, uh, to adopt uh, uh, adopt uh, a, a relearning uh, kind of uh, uh, attitude uh, or a continuous learning kind of an attitude. Uh, uh, so that's that's where we try to support the, uh, the education system. Yeah. Okay, sir. So. So the last question for you sir is any suggestion you would like to give to the current youth and aspiring students? Follow the passion. That's that's uh, the only message which I would always try to give. Don't leave your passion because uh, uh, the passion actually drives every individual. And every individual is different and every individual has a certain kind of a skill. Uh, okay. And, and uh, sometimes uh, in a competitive world they basically try to leave that particular spark whatever they have and uh, the, and they they get into the wrong directions uh, so so whatever skills they have whatever they enjoy they should keep following that and that would actually help them to uh, have their identity and uh, success is going to be good. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for getting, uh, giving our time to our thoughts on education program and uh, your thoughtful insights also.